Are you going to join us? <clears throat> Do you feel like joining us? Do you want the fidget spinner? No, I'm good now, man. Okay. Yeah. I feel like we had an episode start out that way already. We right. did. We did. <laughs> He's arguing about the fidget Yes. Because you made a big deal about me having a fidget spinner while we're recording, and now it's like your tool to ground you in every episode, and it just it, it irks me, man. Well, I would just Walk like around you around be- here like your big old high horse, and you command <laughs> everything. I'm just like, dude, like, sometimes I just want to fuck it up. You just want to fuck? <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> that was vulgar. Well, that was vulgar. Anyway. Oh, welcome. Welcome <laughs> to this sexy week's episode of Not So Anonymous. All right. I want to get right into it once again. Of course you do. Always, man. Always. Jump in. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sink or swim. Ahead. Nah, dude. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> I do. I, I'm so. <laughs> Well, we, we're so unhealthy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I love it. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, no, I do. This is something I'm really excited to talk about. Um, Goomer, Jordan, you guys have recently started working your steps again, going right back through your steps. What, dude? <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> oh, dude. You too. I don't know. Do one of you guys have to go in the corner? <laughs> for real. At this- I know. Put me in, put me in time out. <laughs> you look like you got the time out. You're gonna, you're gonna, I feel like after what just happened, you're gonna, I feel like, you're like you're in trouble. You're going to have to do this episode with the blinders on. Someone get him a blindfold. <laughs> Finger guns I know. are coming back. Oh, shit was funny, dude. It was. All right. I just think it's funny how you say my name, man. Goomer? Goomer. <laughs> <laughs> What's it to you, Goomer? To you, Goomer? How am I supposed to say it? Gumet? No, I'm not trying to correct you. I just said it. You like how I said your name? Yeah, or you think it's funny? It's funny. Are you laughing with me or at me? Oh. Funny how? Funny how? It's just funny, Dylan. Jeez. All right, cool. I'm glad I could fucking amuse you. I didn't Anyways. know I was turning into Donnie over Anyways, here. Anyways, for your Jordan. amusement. <laughs> uh, okay. Goomer. 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 All right. Well, fucking Jordan and Gumet <laughs> have begun working on their steps <laughs> again. And I. So you were talking about it though. So last uh, last week's episode, we talked a lot about like the God concept, right? Yeah. Um, and dude, same. You said like you were kind of <laughs> week to week. The steps can like change wherever wherever we're at or whatever it is. Um, dude, I felt the same way. Like I had as soon as we left here that night, I had a fucking like chance to practice what I preach type shit. Um, but I want to kind of get into some of what you were talking about before we started recording. Yeah. So. We we recorded that episode and we had the uh, you know um, the whole talk about God and all, and all this stuff and it's just kind of crazy how it happened right so then I go home and I have the same conversation with my parents just kind of telling them what we talked about and then I go meet up with my sponsor and we do step two right and and let me so I'm going through the steps again but I also want to preface that the first time I did the steps it was more like read it check a box right. right? I didn't feel like I really like worked it, worked it. So now I'm going through and I'm doing the work. Right. And so we do step two and we have the same conversation about the stuff that we talked about in the episode. And, you know, we're kind of on the same page and we're just talking about it, picking each other's brain, you know, not like a debate. We're just, you know, just talking about it. And uh, so then I leave for meeting up to my sponsor, meeting up with my sponsor. And I go to a meeting where the topic is step two and everyone in the meeting is talking about, you know, what we talked about and God and this stuff and all this. And I'm like, man, that's been a lot. So then I leave that, (laughs) I leave that meeting and I go to another meeting, you know, that I've only been to one other time. I meet up with you guys and there's, they're talking about step two and three and about how like they were Satanists and now they believe in God and all this stuff. And I'm like Mm. in 24 hours, it just like bombarded me with all of these facts and it probably like I was still like really set in my ways probably until that last meeting finally hit. And I began to think, OK, you know, I need to be I started to think, you know, I need to be a little bit more open minded and and all that stuff, because I've been, you know, I wouldn't say fighting the God aspect of it. But, I, you know, I just haven't been on board with it whatever for a while. So going into this like week, you know, I was thinking about it and I just had a rough week then. Like, uh, it didn't really hit me until today and yesterday kind of that, like, you know, I'm just going through one of those, you know, stages of depression and it just kind of happened randomly. You know, there's, there was nothing that caused it. Everything in my life is, is fine. And, you know, I'm working my program and, you know, doing all the right stuff, but it was like, I had this, 
like I just kept romancing the drink. Right. And like in like the worst way, like I kept thinking about all these times, like, like an example, I kept thinking about times where I had 20 bucks and I chose, you know, okay, I can get a fifth and some food with 20 bucks. And I'm sitting there thinking, man, I should have just got a fucking handle with the full 20 bucks. Fuck food. Totally. Right. And that's just like what I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking about the times I went to, to treatment because I went into my treatment place sober because for some reason I thought they wouldn't take me if I was drunk. And I was like, I should have got fucking plastered the night before, dude. I was up all night with anxiety because I wasn't drinking. And I was like, I should have just got lit. <laughs> and then went in there. So I'm like thinking about all this stuff. And, and you know, I, I had the conver- uh this morning. I, I kind of realized you know, what it was. Right. And it's just, you know, my state of mind and my mental state. And, um, so I was talking to my parents cause I was going to go meet up with my sponsor today. And we were just talking about step three. And I, and I mentioned that to them also that that's how I'd been feeling. And I was like, and I don't want you to think that this is any cause for concern. I haven't been close to going to the store to buy anything or whatever, but I was having these thoughts of like, if I wasn't with you guys, if we weren't doing this podcast, if I didn't live with my parents who keep, so if I didn't have these things that kept me accountable, would I've just fucking fucked off and went and got drunk. Like if I moved to a different state and I started feeling this way, I probably would have convinced myself to go drink if I didn't have these things like holding me accountable. And so these are all the thoughts that are going through my mind. And so I'm talking to them and, uh, and you know, my mom said, you know what, you know where, if you did take that drink, you know where it would lead you and it would, it would, you know, and, and where it would go. And I was like, you know, the crazy thing is in my mind, I go, I don't give a fuck. Right. Right. And so that conversation led into me going to do my third step with, uh, with my sponsor today. And we were talking about that more and, you know, between that and doing the third step with my sponsor, I just kind of had de- decided, you know what? I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to, I'm going to give the God thing a try and, and, you know, try to turn my will over to the best I can, because I've been doing the program to the best I can. And so far, you know, I, I like the result, but I'm still feeling this way. So if I can do something that can maybe help get me out of it, I'm going to try. Like I've never really tried before. I've kind of tried to find my way around it and try to find loopholes and all that stuff. And I was like, you need to stop being so stubborn and you guys know me. So I don't yeah. want to admit that I'm wrong, right? No shit. Yeah. But Continue. I might be wrong. And so, um, I'm like, I'm just going to try. I don't know how, um, yet. Cause I, I mean, that's the third step, right? Making the decision. So I was like, I'm making the decision today that I'm going to try. And I know that, I know that, part of God's plan for me is to stay sober. So as long as I wake up with the intent of working at staying sober, I'm starting my day off in God's will. And that's kind of like what to me was like, okay, that's a good place to start. And we'll just go from there. So I went from last week where I wanted to talk about how you don't need the program. You don't need God for the program and all that stuff to my mind changed to, okay, let's give it a shot over the, over the, over the week and really, really try to put the work in. So there, I, fuck dude, there's so much there, what you just said. Like there, I mean, I want to like, I'm going to try to like pace myself. Um, yeah, sorry. I kind of just, no, that was, no, that was fucking great. <laughs> I loved it. I, I, I loved it. So I want to touch on some stuff, but before that, I want to ask you, like, have you noticed like a feeling of a disconnect from God? Because just like, I firmly believe this and we hear this a lot, right? Like no human power, will get me sober, keep me sober, right? Like human power. Do you feel like there was too much of an emphasis on your recovery on human power, like fellowship? Cause you mentioned like, if I wasn't with my parents and I wasn't with you guys and doing this podcast, and if I was like in a different situation, would I have fucking drank? Do you feel like that? Do you feel that at all? Like there was too yeah. much of an emphasis on human power and the disconnect from God? Yeah, I, I definitely did. I mean, I didn't, I guess I probably didn't, Notice connect it. it to a disconnect with God, but I definitely felt the too much relying too much on my situation and the people around me and my self will. Um, that was like, cause uh, you know, I know when my mind starts convincing me of stuff, you know, and it's like, that was a pretty familiar territory just going, Oh, that's, that's good. 
I don't give a fuck because it'll make everything better. You know, type of, right. you know, type of thought. And like, so I, I, uh, yeah, I didn't until you said it just now, I didn't connect it to being a disconnect from God, but yeah, essentially that that's what it was. Yeah, man. I, I, and so, and that's kind of a lot of what we were talking about too, is just like that. No human power, right? Like I can't rely if my reliance is on my sponsor or any pastor, because we were talking about church a lot, or you guys, like, I'm fucked, right? Like, I, I, it's not going to work because there's going to come that moment where I'm all by myself and the fucking <clears throat> temptation and the addiction comes knocking at my door, knocking at my fucking head. And it's like, yo, what's up, boy? You're all alone now. What's up? Mm-hmm. I got you. And like, where am I going to be at that situation? And it's so funny that happened to you, bro. Like, so funny because right after we recorded, like, I legit that, like, when I'm on my way home from this, I get a chance to practice what I preach. Cause a big thing was right. Like what happens when I'm all by myself? Where's my foundation at? Is it in human power? Is it in God? It's like, God was like, okay, do you really believe that? All right, let's, let's try it out then motherfucker. You know, cause I'm driving home from here and I got a cigarette in my fucking mouth and I'm talking to my sponsee and we're talking about step three, right? I'm talking about like what it's like to turn it over to God. And I'm having the same conversation with him essentially about like, what's a, you know, there's going to come a time where no one's going to be available. You're going to be by yourself and this is going to happen. You know, it, it's just, I, I believe that, right? Cause it happened to me as well. And as I'm talking about this, I go to pull the cigarette out of my fucking mouth. I'm on the freeway. Cigarette gets stuck to my lip, flips up in a fresh cherry, fucking burns my eyeball, just puts it right in my fucking eyeball. I can't see shit now. And I'm my left eye is 2200. I'm almost legally blind in my fucking left eye. So I'm driving, I'm on the phone with him. I'm like, oh shit, dude. You know, like, I think I got to call you back, dude. Like, I can't see shit. I'm on the fucking freeway, <laughs> like not even close to home yet. I'm like over, I'm still pretty far. I'm like out by like Jackrabbit, mm-hmm. you know? So that's still, you know, 20 minutes or so from my house. I managed to get home, dude. I'm like dowsing my fucking eyeball with water while I'm trying to drive this whole fucking time, dude. And I get there and my <laughs> eyes, it, yeah, it was bad, bro. Like I'm fucking, I pulled over at one point, like when I finally could and I kept dowsing my eyeball and I finally get home and I'm like, I had this like moment of acceptance. Cause like I couldn't see out of my eye. Like my eye was just, it was just like looking out of a fucking frosted over windshield. Right? Like that's exactly what it looked like. And I was like, dude, I might've just fucked my eye up. And like, I found like this moment of acceptance. I was like, you know what? Like, all right. <laughs> Jesus take the wheel. Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. Exactly. For real, bro. And Bree starts looking it up. And you know, of course, what did they tell you? Don't ever look shit up online. Yeah. She goes, all right. So it might not ever come back. <laughs> That's what she tells me. I was like, fuck it. All right. Then <laughs> like, Damn. I like found like this piece of like this acceptance. I was when like, when you got home, she told you that. Yeah, well, yeah, because we started looking it up because we we called my cousin who's a nurse and and then her friend who's a nurse and they're like, oh, yeah, this is most likely what it was. It was like this, you know, whatever. And uh, I forgot exactly what medical terms they fucking use, but Bree starts looking it up and she starts looking at these stories of this instance. She Mm -hmm. goes, all right, so I'm going to be honest. There's a chance that your site might not come back Uh the way it was. And I was just like, and I for real, I didn't panic or nothing. I was like, all right. Cool. It like, is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> For real. <laughs> so I ended up, but they're all of them kept telling me, like, you need to go to the fucking emergency room, though. You need to go to the emergency room, whatever it is. So I went there, and the first thing I tell the uh, the nurse that I see, I was like, all right, listen, no narcotics, though. No narcotics. And she's like, all right, cool, no narcotics. And uh, I get back there, and, dude, this thing is fucking painful, bro. Super fucking painful. My head is pounding to the point it's making me nauseous. Feels like someone packed my eyeball with fucking burning hot sand because I can't fucking see or keep it open whatsoever. So I'm back there and obviously in emergency, you fucking wait forever, right? So I finally get back there. The fucking doctor pours this like iodine shit and like takes like puts a light over my eye and you can see clearly like the fucking cherry mark just on my (laughs) eyeball where it just burnt up. And he's like, and I told him the same thing. I was like, listen, no narcotics. He goes, oh, do you have past addiction issues? I was like, yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I do. All right. And so he's like, all right, cool. So he fucking does. It. He's like, yeah, dude, your fucking eyeballs burnt up, whatever. Um, I'm going to put these drops in. So I go and sit down and this shit is fucking hurting, bro. And I think I talked to you for a minute, right? Because you were texting me back and forth throughout that time. Yeah. But, you know, because of where I was at, I didn't have any service. Mm. It was locked up in the hospital. It wasn't my phone's fault, you know what I mean? But it was like, <laughs> <This mother. laughs> I didn't have service. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> so 
I'm sitting there, dude, and the fucking doctor comes back. He's like, all right, cool. So I'm going to give you this antibiotic, this cream or this ointment that you got to put in your eye, um, these eye drops to like, you know, fucking help keep your eyeball still. Um, and I'm going to send you, uh, and I'm going to give you some oxys because this is going to be really, really painful. And I looked at him. I was like, fuck no, bro. I was like, no, <laughs> no oxys. I can't. I can't. <laughs> oxys. <laughs> but then he left and I was like, fuck dude. Like all that shit I was talking. All right. Boom. Like time to practice it. Right. I was by myself. Brie wasn't allowed back there. Right. Like it's, you know, cause of COVID shit. Like I had to be there by myself. I'm by myself. My fucking phone is dropping, so I can't even, like, make the fucking phone call. And I'm just sitting there, and the doctor came and offered me Oxy. My addiction kicked in was like, well, if you take it as prescribed in this situation. <laughs> free lapse. Free lapse. Yeah, this motherfucker. That's what he was like. You should have done it, bro. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> free lapse. But it's a good thing you couldn't call Goomer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. God, like, did God really disconnected me <laughs> from Goomer for sure, dude. <laughs> He'd be like, hell yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. be out trying to this burn his eye with this a your cigarette. opportunity, bro. Dude, he was like, for real. I was like, fuck you, dude. Like, when have I ever taken anything as prescribed? Like, what, I can't, I'm, I don't think I'm going to start now. But, like, it was for real, bro. Like, it really came down to that, dude. Like, I yeah. sat there and I was like, damn, this motherfucker just offered me Oxy. No one's here. No one would know. And even if I do, I, could, I have a perfectly good reason as to why I could justify this. Knowing damn well I take one of those motherfuckers, bro. That obsession is going to fucking kick in hard, bro. Mm -hmm. I just sat there and I fucking prayed. I was like, listen, God, I'm not asking you to fix this. I'm not asking you to fucking fix me, take away the pain, nothing like that. I'm not asking for anything. I said, just ride this out with me. Just be with me for this. Guide me through this. And, dude, I got through it, bro. Like, that night, I got a chance to practice what I preached. So, yeah. to hear all of your shit that happened, too, after that episode... It's like, damn, dude. Like, for me, at least, that's just like, damn, something's at work. Something's at work. Yeah, you it know? really was. And that's crazy, dude. I didn't even know the, you know, all that stuff. What a, what a fucking doctor, right? I know. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Like, yeah, you got past addiction issues? Okay, I'm going to give you some oxys. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> fucking balls on that guy, dude. Yeah, yeah, I was, but, but, dude, uh, I was scared, bro. Dude, that's, that, that's intense, but that's crazy, and that's that's you know it wasn't even until just right now when you when you kind of said to me that that I was feeling that disconnect and you know being away from all you guys I didn't even feel realize that that's what I was missing and so that's cool that to get it uh see uh to get to see it work like you know right after that I remember when Bree sent us that photo oh dude. I was about to say I that thought, dude I thought <laughs> me too. I was like I was like you look dead so I'm like I'm like Dylan is something terrible has happened. Yeah, or he like stubbed his toe. Either way, he would look <laughs> like that. <laughs> or, he, or he just got something in his eye. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm, like, dude, I'm like, either way, he's gonna look that way. Yeah, I was, my, my first fucking thought, I was like. <laughs> Well, a year and 18 months is a good run, boy. I thought they fucking, I was like, this motherfucker overdosed or something. I know, dude, Donnie called. Like horrible. Dude, I couldn't fucking open my eye, bro. Not that, you're close. You just look like, dude, like you were in a you're rollover like, you were just or like, something, dude. Like, like, yeah, bro, dude. I was, it fucking, dude, it drained me. Like, it drained my energy. Like, for oh, real. You posed for that picture. Po I had no idea she took it. I couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder the doctor was like, "Here, you need some oxys, bro. You're looking rough." <laughs> I know, Don. He's, like, he's like past addiction issues. More like, yeah. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> he gave it to you because he thought you were dope sick. Because I hear, bro, get well. Get, yeah, for real. I know. Uh, Donnie calls me. Oh, this motherfucker. He goes, "I seen that picture. I'm like, this motherfucker recorded a recovery podcast and went out and overdosed." <laughs> Dude, I saw that and I thought it was a, like an old ass. Uh, picture of you like yeah, in your picture, I, dude. Dude. I literally Straight thought up, the same dude. thing i was like damn i haven't seen that picture yeah, yeah me too but then i looked at his clothes i was like that's what he was wait just like, <laughs> he was just wearing that like today like, yeah. and you look like shit bro and the brother's was <laughs> listening she just sent a photo there was no context nothing like, <laughs> right, it, yeah. it was just we all just got the photo and was like in the group uh, was, that's it. <laughs> i was just like oh that's funny we get we'll use that eventually <laughs> yeah for sure right? Dude, that, you look like shit bro <laughs> i felt like shit that shit hurt bro the only thing yeah, that, but you were dirty 
<laughs> like you were dirty. Oh, I think I think your face was really red. That's why I was you're like, really red. Like, Look at his pants; they're just like it looked like you're just dusty as shit. I might. I don't know, bro. Yeah. I couldn't see for. Hours. We, got, we gotta post it, man. You look like shit, dude. Thank you. Know? I thought it was an old picture. <laughs> I was like, damn, he, I'm on fire. I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> dude, I didn't either at first. And then I was like, this shit got worse and worse. And wor I, like I said, I couldn't see for a long time. So can I ask you this? What? Do you, do you, on, do you <laughs> oh my God. He's do on you, a good one. Do you believe that cigarettes make your life unmanageable? Yes. 100%. <laughs> Are you powerless I, over nicotine? Yes, yes. <laughs> because they, literally, you burned your fucking eye with a cigarette, yes. and you still continue to smoke oh. with a burnt eye. Bree goes, you know what fucking kills me is we get back from the hospital, and you go and spark one. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that was stressful. Okay, <laughs> right. a cigarette. Exactly, dude. Exactly. <laughs> For real, bro. Oh, it, it, dude. I 100 percent think that. Absolutely. I've noticed all the signs, the mm -hmm. money spent, the time spent, the tra I went to three different gas stations the other night to get the ones that I wanted. Took time away from my family, burned my fucking eyeball. I don't even know how that happened. Dude, the doctor goes, I got to be honest with you. We don't get a lot of eyeball burns. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, uh, he's like, there's no way this guy burned his eye on a cigarette uh, fucking attic yeah, liar. Exactly. Yeah, just take the oxys and get the fuck out of my face. We, we both know why you're here, kid. Bro, I've, I've, been, I've burnt my eyeballs a lot, dude. Like, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> of course you have. Oh, I know. Me too. Me too. I know. Yeah, tell them, one, of the worst time, one of the worst times, bro. Like, well, all right. I had three, real, three really bad times. But one of them, so I, when I, <laughs> so I had welder's flash and I had plasma burn, which feels like someone just grabs fucking rocks and sand, just throws it in your eyes from welding without a mask on or cutting stuff up with it. Like when I cut that semi trailer up in my backyard <laughs> with the plasma cutter, I didn't wear glasses. Like, yeah, I had plasma that burned my eyeballs. But one of the worst fucking burns I ever had was when, so I would smoke when I'd smoke crack, right? I'd put fucking rocks up and i go like you know, go like this first so it fucking pops out dude and it's straight up hot oil right in my fucking mm. eyes bro the worst fucking burn ever and it's chemicals on top of that i was, I was about to say did it get you fucking high i mean maybe I, I, don't know. I, mean, I was already high <laughs> 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 I, but i continued to smoke it with one eye after that. i was just one eye and <laughs> i was like damn i was fucked up <laughs> damn, i'm not hurt. gonna not going to tip the pipe up that high anymore. I know. That's the lesson. <laughs> that was a, that was I know better than that. Yeah, it's not to stop smoking crack. Yeah. I know not to put the pipe at that angle yeah. anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, I know, dude. It's the insanity. I 100. Yes, mm -hmm. the insanity. I need to work my steps with cigarettes. For sure. Yeah. It sure hurts, dude. Burn eyeball. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hurt like a bitch, bro. And mm -hmm. I, being straight sober for it was a motherfucker. But... I was worried about you, man. I know you were. I, I, really I felt was. it. I felt I really it. Was, man. You, was you were texting me. Not that you were going to relapse or anything like that. Just like, just worried, concerned. I appreciated it. You appreciated it. I no, did. seriously, I really was going to go over it because I knew you were like just not doing anything and you were just all about March Madness. So I was just like, I'm just going to buy oh, some bro. snacks and, and that's watch the, TV. <laughs> that's the other Don't fucked it. up part. That's the <laughs> other <laughs> fucked up part is I'm sitting there like, <laughs> you couldn't see <laughs> this. This is a fucking holiday for me. March Madness is my fucking Christmas time. And I'm like, Bree, what's that score say? I'm like fucking 80 year old man. Like, oh, man. hot damn it. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Yeah, dude. Ooh, cigarettes. Yeah, sure. Cigarettes first fucked up my first round of March Madness. And then the first two rounds just fucked up everybody. Fucked up. Oh, yeah. Madness. I know. Anyway, who, who beside the point. Who won? It's still going on, yeah. Boomer. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> what I'm in it? last place. Yes. What, what started it off though? Like what bad? What what bad happened? Ohio State. <laughs> Ohio State, Donnie. Yeah, that's what I'm talking. And about. then and then Ohio, no, Ohio they State. They ruined it. Ohio really State not. fucked it up by losing, and then Ohio fucked it up by winning. So you guys are just fucking up everyone's. Guys. I had that game. I called <laughs> oh, that you game. Did? I did call that game. <laughs> the only game I fucking called apparently because I'm in last place. But yeah. Oh, anyway, anyway, we digress from the <laughs> back to surrender. <laughs> so Goomy, you've been working your fucking steps again too, right? Yep. Right? Got a different spot. Sponsor and uh, yeah, it's taking me through. How again. is that, man? Mm, 
fresh. It's fresh. Just, yeah, it's fresh. It's like I just need to peel another layer. Like it's the best way I can describe it. So what made? So what made? What led you back to that? Like wanting to rework your steps. There's a certain book that I want to go through, and I can't. I haven't been able to go through it by myself because I just got better shit to do, and I really want to just continue to learn more, man. You have better shit to do. Yeah, that's how you describe it. Yeah. Okay. Way to put your recovery first. Though, really. <laughs> <laughs> you have better shit to do than staying I sober, bro. I know. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Sober versus recovery. All right. Just to hold me accountable, man. I need someone deflate my ego. You know, it's like I've been sober for you know over eighteen months now, and it was kind of a humbling experience, like. To ask for help again, I guess, mm. the best way, you know, starting fresh and this dude like questioning me and I'm just like, yo, dude, like, I know what's up, you know, but right. I really don't know what's up. <laughs> like, it was just, it, it was cool. Like, it was, it was a really unique conversation and I just picked up the phone, met this dude a while back and then probably only seen him like one other time at a meeting and I just called him and I just pulled the trigger and I was like, yo, man, I'm really interested. Can you take me through the steps? I just needed to dig deep again because that. I just wasn't doing none of the shit that works, man. Like you said, mm-hmm. I was in a I was in a depressed state. I'm like, and you would not up. admit it. I was in a lazy state. <laughs> 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 but it, it's it's been going good, man. Like I like after I, like I end my days with that with step work. You know, I go through this, this book and ask questions, and it just has a deeper understanding because I just want to. Just getting sponsees and going through the steps again. Like I just want more. I just want more out of it. Like, I just mm-hmm. I want more, more shit to give. If that makes sense, or more experience, more, more, and it's a different way, different literature, and a different fellowship. What I'm going through. Like I work a certain fellowships uh, program and or or steps, and now I'm going through the other ones. So I just I want to see what happens, and that's the book that I first opened up and and read and rehab and. I'm just really, I just want to. So, I mean, it's the t- same 12 steps, but the way that this book brings you through it, yeah. it's a different like format type deal. Like not the format of the steps themselves, mm. but just like a different word guide. I just, it's, I'm just been really, really, really fucking comfortable in my sick, dude. Yeah. Like it's not the fact that I'm, I want to use or pick up. I mean, the thoughts. But that's irrelevant, occur. right? Yeah. Like, it's just like, I don't, I don't know. I just don't feel like spiritually fit. I got a lot of mm-hmm. questions. I just got, I'm just stuck. I'm just fucking yeah. stuck. And then I don't know, almost like a lost feeling, limbo, I'm late. I just don't have the energy or the thought or to do fucking anything lately. Like, I don't want to do shit. I don't even want to watch TV. Yeah. Like, I don't know, like, where I'm at, what I'm feeling. Like, it's it's a weird, weird thing. Like, everything's okay and nothing's wrong. But at the same time, it's like, why the fuck am I feeling like this, you know? And I know the tools. Like, I meditate and this and that. But And I started relying on my will for a long time you know like like almost like it's like living practicing living in god's will because i like my relationship with my higher power is like developed so deep but it's like i'm mad and uncomfortable in god's will if that makes sense like i'm i'm not fighting it i'm accepting it and i'm i'm, I'm writing it out and I'm, I'm doing the next right thing and practicing god's will but i'm not okay with being in god's will if that makes sense it, it makes perfect sense right like i'm, yeah, I'm not happy that. you know it's like like being in god's will like i'm still like i'm like almost placing the like god's will is a big circle and i'm inside of it but i'm still running my little will inside of it mm-hmm. if that makes sense yeah so you're in your will yeah. it does because I, I know what you i know what yeah, you mean yeah that was pretty kind of, much but like i'm not being fucking destructive only to myself like the like living in self-will like i know how like it you affect other people's lives and shit like that and it's kind of hard to explain. Like I, I, I don't know. But what were you saying? That's kind of like one of the one of the problems I had wrestling with it too. Essentially, was I had this. I guess it was almost a fear of like, what if God's will is not where I want to be? Like, what if, what if I don't want to do that? I mean, it's just kind of a crazy thing to think of. No, yeah, that in that, but it's sense. but it's like, what if it takes me to do something I don't want to do? You know, and you know that is essentially my will. So, right. but I mean, I get that. That's that's like a the same fear that I have with it also. So, just saying, that I understand. <laughs> so, one of the things that I really had to comprehend and I came to terms with, as far as like my faith, is coming to believe and understand and accept in my life. What happens, like as far as God's will with my life, is none of my fucking business. Like, and it's not gonna be what I mean. Because if I like. Like if I planned everything out, I mean, we've seen what happened when I planned everything out, right? Like when I did it all myself, 
right? So like accepting that God's will for me is none of my business is like something that fucking helped me out a lot. Like when I learned about that aspect of it and it, it really brought me through and I was just having this conversation because you mentioned something right now, you know, well, I was, I'm only being destructive towards myself, right? Like, I think that's a lie because like I felt it too, you know? And I think I would be shocked mm -hmm. if other people around you did not feel it. Donnie just agreed with that, right? Like, so I felt the difference or the disconnect with you as well. I did. Yeah. No, I had an early so, conversation with you. It was like, when we were talking on the phone the other night, dude, after being a speaker, like I felt spiritually fit again. It was like, I, I got, I unplugged to handle some shit in life, right? Like I was trying to take care of priorities and, 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 and trying to balance life out and, and being sober without constantly doing in-person shit, like meetings and, you know, picking mm -hmm. up with the phone. And like we talked about in past episodes, but it was a little, little by little, I stopped. I started lying to myself and I stopped accepting, like, what, what did I say? I, was, I stopped accepting who I, I thought, I thought authentically who I am. Your authentic self. Yeah. Like who I truly am as a person, who I am spiritually, emotionally, like just everything, like being a genuine person to myself, if that makes sense. Like I stopped being that and I started picking myself apart and blocking certain emotions and, and, and stuffing and, and putting certain walls up with people and stuff like that before i knew it i had all these walls up where i wasn't even feeling connected to anybody right like it was just like i'll do it later i'll do it later it's like nah that's a weakness like nah i don't really like that like it's almost like i worked so hard to control the stuff and sobriety and emotions and and feelings and, and and analyze them and grow from them and stuff like that that to the point where it's like it becomes like a tool you know like i don't like you're saying like i don't really get mad anymore right but then like <laughs> lately like i have been mad like mm. because you, i think you believe you get to the point where it's like shit doesn't really bother you but then sometimes it comes back and you like just fucking self will run right and i think i was mm -hmm. heading down that path where i started shutting myself off from from just connecting i guess dude i just and i and i just had this conversation because my swan t he was calling me and he was telling me like dude i'm not going to meetings right now because i got to this thing. I haven't been to a meeting in a couple of days because I haven't thought about drinking. And he goes, but I'm like fucking miserable right now. I like I feel myself starting to slip back into that isolation and all that shit, man. And it's something that we talked about on the last um, IG or the testimony Tuesday, like that sobriety versus recovery thing, right? Like right. I have no interest in sobriety. Sober fucking sucks. Like I'm bored and I'm fucking miserable if I'm just sober. You know, but that recovery, the shit, that lifestyle aspect of it, the recovery, when I get to speak with other fucking struggling drug addicts, I get to fucking go to meetings, I get to do H&I, &I, I get to do these things, like, like when I'm actually living, working a program, like now I'm stoked the fuck out, right? And that's yeah. when recovery is dope. But when I'm like white knuckling it and I'm just like holding on for dear life, I'm miserable. I'm absolutely miserable. And like you said, I didn't have any thoughts of like using or anything like that. But what the fuck does that matter? Like I didn't get clean to fucking be miserable. You know what I mean? So like, I'm going, I want to continue to do the things and I'm not speaking on, on this as something I've never done because I've went through the depression. I've disconnected from you guys and God. I've disconnected. I've put those walls up. I've stopped answering the phones. I've been through that. I've done what? that. And I remember how fucking horrible it was and like how miserable I was and telling Bree the exact words. I did not get fucking clean for this shit. This is not why I got clean, you know? So when we had that conversation the other night, because you spoke at a nooner, and then that night you also, I covered your H&I commitment so you can go and um, speak at another meeting, and I just yeah. told you, I was like, damn, dude, that's what's up, bro. Like, I just had to, had to put my recovery first. Boom. Like, I just, mm -hmm. like, I, I, it was hard to get, like, a sitter, and I took shit from him, because, like, the, you know, normies or family members are always like, well, dude, like, you've been doing this for a minute. It, I got, it went back to that. And I started, I started being a, like a people pleaser around my house mm. it's like well i don't feel spiritually fit and i know i'm not going to use but i'm in my house doing what i gotta do and it's just it was just really hard so I, like i just got away and i was just handling my shit and, and i started making me realize like 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 i started thinking about all like conversations like how we train people and stuff like that it's like like even i'm growing in recovery like i'm still even the family members that live through my addiction are still growing with me in my recovery now right. so it's like now that i'm at a i've showed so much growth or i've done so much things around the house now they're at this point and it's almost like well now i gotta that's why i started working the steps again because it, I, I i gotta use that stuff to be at the house to work my program or plug black in and find a different way without leaving the house like so i had to find like new tools and like get back into the 
into the literature and, and step work and writing shit down and get new assignments and talk to a new, like humble myself and talk and ask for help have someone take me through the steps again even though like i already know what to do if that, you if, think if, you think you know what to do yeah but i mean I, i've gotten this far with with certain things and right. now it's like life is changing and my situation is changing and it's going to keep changing and it's like life on life's terms so it's like well what can i do to be at that house because obviously me leaving the meetings or or me fellowshipping going out and fellowship with recovery people it's like it's becoming a problem in my household like they don't understand it they don't see it from our perspective so it's like what can i do so i just i started working the steps again and going through like i said started reaching out to a new person and almost like a newcomer thing but like in my house like like while i that's can, awesome like it's, it's just something that i had to do to get me spiritually fixed i was in a rut man like i've been in a rut and i just it's like that whole thing of like surrender and like being in a new relationship and recovery, like that shit's been a fucking roller coaster, like a motherfucker, dude. Like, and and it was amazing, man. The nooner, Donnie was there. I sent the text to you guys. And I was like, yo, dude, like last minute, I could think someone bailed out, and then that person chairing hit me up, and I was like, sure, I'll do it. And then Donnie was there, and I don't even remember what I said. And, and apparently, what that. you said had him fucking eating out of the palm of your hand, though, according to Donnie. <laughs> I was good. Bro. I, I heard it. I heard it was fire. Thank you. A couple people told me it was really, really good that you did a, a good job. So yeah. I'm like, oh, that's Goomer. He fucking just spits fire. No, I, <laughs> like, I, that's just what he does. I was, no, I was glad I was, I was there, man. Every time yeah. I hear your story, I just, I just, you know, I, I appreciate the the honesty and then the you, you have you have the vulnerability, but you have this uh, ability to convey your emotions like through your words, which I don't really, I, I can't do that. But you can, you know, that's that's a big part of why you carry the message, you know, in such a good way, because you can tap into that, like the emo, you feel that shit and it comes right. out through your words and it's, and it's good. It captivates people and, and it gives people hope because, you know, they hear about you being fucking handcuffed to a bed in Tijuana, Mexico to like, now you're talking about recovery and being happy. And even right. though we go through shit, it's just, you know, it's this two shot pass. It's fucking brief moments of, you know, shit days. You're not going to every, not every day is going to be fucking perfect. And I've like, I've come to realize that even more because dude, some days I'm like, man, fuck this, you know? Yeah. But then other days I'm like on this spiritual high, like nothing can stop me. You know, like you called me that, that night after you spoke at the other meeting yeah. and you were like fired up, but I was oh, like wow. in the middle, yeah. I couldn't like talk to you, you know, at the moment. And I was mm. like, fuck dude. Like, I, <laughs> you know, I wanted to talk to you more, but I was like in the middle of something. So I, you know, got off the phone, but I think it's great, dude, that you guys are like, reworking your steps. I like, I, I have the same thought. Like, I want to work through my steps again because it's like my what I base my, you know, my life recovery is all about self-discovery. And it's more and more because as I grow in my recovery, my perspective changes. My relationship with God changes. My relationship with people change. All that, dude. And, and my character defects still come up a lot, you know. And that's why I want to rework my steps. But I haven't found that person yet that I see. But I'm like, yeah, that's mm. that's the fucking person that I want to, you know, want me to want to take me through the steps. Like we were just talking about this before. Like uh, I want to get back working out like with a trainer because mm -hmm. that's I want someone that like I see what they you know, how they walk, how they what they have. And and I want to ask them for advice. Like, you know, just same thing with I haven't found that person yet, though. Yeah. You know, but I'm I, I'm I'm working like I'm actively putting it out in the universe and it, and it'll come out it'll come to me i know that yeah. got you donnie i'll, I'll start working next week yeah. <laughs> the last fucking person <laughs> uh, it's, it's been cool man i was fired up after that seven dude and like it, it was really cool dude like just to get those compliments and stuff like that because i'm just like spitting my shit out because i've done it so many times it's it's like it's not necessarily like scary or fearful like like i'm, I'm really i'm really used to like spitting my my story i've been a speaker a lot of times and then constantly doing h and i since i've been like four five years sober so it's like four or five years sober damn i dude. mean you get months sober. Sober. Damn. Oh, damn. <laughs> plot twist yeah for real <laughs> <laughs> she's all psych i wasn't newcomer at all <laughs> but uh yeah dude it was cool some dude comes up to me he's like hey man do you have a second to talk to me and i'm like yeah of course man and then he's like dude you just told my story dude and he he just spit out his guts and he was just like, dude, he's like, I'm, I'm four days. He's like, I just, I came here on my, uh, by myself. He's like, and I was comfortable leaving. He's like, but your story, he's like, that convinced me, inspired me to stay. He's like, I'm really going to try this sober thing. I'm going to really do it. And he's like, dude, can you, you know, I need a sponsor to stay at this facility. This is that. He's like, will you sponsor me? I was like, dude, yeah, of course. I'll be more than happy you to, you know, take you through the steps and just talk. And 
I just told him, get, uh, call me every day. He's like, and I gave him my number and I stayed out and talked to a couple of dudes. One of the dudes that I did H and I a while back, I saw him at, at that facility, bro. And I hadn't seen him or and like, I gave him my number at H and I commitment. Like the, the, the facility, like Copper Springs and like where, where we're going, it was like way somewhere on the other side of town and just seeing him and like seeing like looking healthy was a kind of rewarding thing to see. I was that like, is. holy shit, bro. I was that's like, that's cool. cool. I was like, dude, I'm happy for you that you're here, dude. I was like, just stay strong, man. It was cool. Yeah. No, it it is. It's fucking amazing to see like, well, just like that kid who came in, that text you make sure he gets a phone list. Mm -hmm. You know, like that kid was in the H&I that we did together. Oh, yeah. That was fucking, that's, that was yeah, cool. It is. It's and I wasn't stuff. even going to chair that meeting, dude. Yeah, I know. That's cool. Yeah, that's wild. Someone bailed out. Like, it's just been like, I've been, I've been saying yes again, you know? Yeah. Like when the hand, mm, the wrong. responsibility pledge, I started saying yes. I was like, yeah. Hey, I need you to cover this. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I need you to be speaker. Sure. Well, one of the right. things that I love too that you said earlier is I humbled myself and I reached out and I asked for help again. Right. right? Okay. Like that's at fucking, what do you have, 19 months? Something like that. Something yeah. like that. I got, I think you were a month behind me, right? So about 19 months. <laughs> Not like that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a month behind me. <laughs> nah, dude. All right. My point of that was like, so 19 months, what, 13, 14 months? 14. 14 months. Yeah. Fucking like, yo, all right, I'm going to rework my steps, right? I'm going to find a new sponsor. I'm going to humble myself and ask for help. Reaching out, ask for help. Like, it's not just something that we have to do as a newcomer, right? Like, it's not just something I have to do as a newcomer. It's something I have to do whenever I'm fucking up. And one of my favorite Bible verses, I'm not trying to bang on anyone, but one of my favorite verses is for when I'm standing firm, be careful that I do not fall. Because as soon as I think I got something figured out and I'm like coasting and I'm riding on my shit, I'm like, shit, I'm gravy. I'm good. Boom. Yeah, Fuck. Humble, bro. Humble. humble real and it, fucking and it happened to me, bro. It happened, man. I was on it. So I, I've been, like I said, I, I think I mentioned this too on the show is I, I've been avoiding a certain nine step amends, right? Because... And I and I didn't even realize how hard I was avoiding it until a conversation. It was a conversation with someone close to me, and I fucking snapped. He said something, and I just fucking lost it, right? And it was the first time, I believe, in my recovery that I responded with violence. Like, I was like, mother... Like, I responded, and it made me so fucking... Like, it really started bothering me, right? Because here I am, I'm thinking, like, I'm good, like, man... You know, I've made, you know, Captain I've made a man's cap recovery, right? I'm fucking cap recovery. <laughs> Boom. Not so much, motherfucker. And mm -hmm. I talked to my sponsor about it. I was like, dude, this is what I'm about to fucking do. He goes, all right, cool. Well, you sound like a fucking idiot, but cool. If that's what you want to do. I was like, and at first I'm like, oh shit, he just co-signed. Like, cool. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, all right, cool. And then he started talking more. He's like, Dylan, what was it? What is it with you that you reacted this way? I was like, well, didn't you hear what this motherfucker said to me? He's like, no, no, no. I know what he said. What is it wrong with, what's wrong with you that all it took was this to give your peace of mind away? Something I had to fight for my fucking life for, right? Like something I literally put my life on the line to receive my peace of mind. Mm. On the, you know, split second, I was willing to give it away. And I realized, man, I hadn't become willing to make amends to them all yet. Mm -hmm. I had to go and like, I had to really like work that step again, right? And I, and I talk to him and I'm like, and I have these conversations and then I end up seeing this person and I'm like, all right, cool. Yada, yada, yada. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. He says one thing and boom, I fucking snap again. I respond with violence. Right. And I'm like, fuck, like, <laughs> damn it. like I thought I was fucking over this. And I called and I called my sponsor. I was like, dude, I think I missed something in my four step. I, you know, like, fuck. And he's like. And it, wait, and we had this amazing conversation. He's like, dude, you didn't miss anything in your four step. He was like, you fucking, <laughs> you need to like 10 step yourself. Like this, it's a behavior that is reoccurring. But what is it about you and your spiritual fitness, Dylan, that is causing you to react this way? Force me to relook at my whole shit, dude. And it was like, now it's to the point where like, I'm grateful for it because I do owe this person an amends. I do owe certain people an amends. And like this series of events has led up to me like being willing to look at my program look at what i'm doing wrong fuck it doesn't matter what they do right look at what i'm doing wrong and try to obtain that peace of mind again yeah mm -hmm. that makes sense it i think that's why i got to the point where i got like i even though i was looking at my part i wasn't working through my part big difference yeah, right? yeah like you like you have these tools and you have this shit's like 
you get mad or you get a new resentment or someone pisses you off or fucking you start you snap whatever like now it's like i I, i've worked so hard and practiced this shit so good to to like my best ability that when shit like this happens like it's easy for me to find my part and what security or fear or whatever is getting moved with me but it's like am i really working through that yeah and i'm just like and i just brushed it up man whatever dude and like slowly by little by little it's like I started becoming less fucking unspiritual asshole to be around, dude. Like, it just almost numb. But yeah. one thing that you said to your, your peace of mind, this is what it reminded me of. Start. <laughs> Once I fucking lost my shit, dude, early on. And then I was like, I called, I picked up the phone, I was talking to this person. I was like, blah, 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 this fuck, fuck this, 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 and this, and that. They're like, why do you let this person take your peace of mind so fat quickly? I was like, nah, blah, blah, blah. This is like, they're like, Goomer, how much is your peace of mind worth to you? I was like, what? He's like, how much is your peace of mind worth to you? And I was being a smart ass. I was like, $175 million. <laughs> and like, so why do you give it away so so freely? And I was like, fuck. God damn it. I was like, God damn it. It donned you. It donned me, dude. <laughs> Ever since then, like $175 million always plays in my fucking mind, dude. When, when I'm about to lose my shit, dude. It's dude. tough, though, sometimes. Uh, yeah, I agree. And like kind of, you know, what you were saying, you, or, well, first, I, I had just, just a small story when you were talking about the Bible verse. So when I was having that conversation with my parents today about, and, uh, about the third step and living in God's will and like, you know, how do I know? And, I, you know, I guess I can start with this. And then my, my parents being my parents and the good Christians, they are, my dad goes, well, you know, there's a book. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, baby steps. Nice. Nice. Uh, like, all right, all right. <laughs> but, but it was, and like, you know, I, this whole experience to me is like, it feels pretty new because. I don't get humbled that often because I'm more right than not most of the time. Oh, boy. I think. <laughs> you ain't gonna make it, dude. <laughs> but it, it was real. It was a real humbling experience to look back at, like even you know what we talked about last week, and and kind of how I've had my whole mentality going into this, and go, you know what? Maybe I was wrong, and and to, to you know think you know especially with you guys, it fucking sucks to admit when you're wrong. You like to <laughs> rub it in. But <laughs> not you true. know, I had to go not even true. I had to go, you know, maybe I was wrong. And then even with the you know, being in the depressive state to admit that to so I've never like admitted any depression I've ever had to anybody. So to say it to my parents, to my sponsor in a meeting and on the mic all in one day is like a big step for me because like I'm I'm Mr. Positive. I'm the positive guy. I feel like I, I always have, I'm like always optimistic. I'm always trying to look like, I don't, hey, what? I don't think that I, I am. You don't know what goes on in my fucking head, dude. I'm just saying about the behavior. Like, oh. because I think that goes to that. Like, I'm not saying you're like, you're a fucking negative asshole. I'm just saying, bro. <laughs> No, but, but what I'm saying is, <laughs> damn, I'm taking a fucking big step here, bro. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> I was trying to get to that. I was trying like, to get to that. So what I'm saying is like the the also like competitiveness and me not wanting to be wrong almost stopped me from saying, hey, I, I need help because I'm feeling this way because I don't want to be wrong. I want to be Mr. Captain Recovery, Mr. Captain Positivity. Yeah. Which, by the way, we should make a shirt that says Captain Recovery. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, so like it's <laughs> it's really been a giant step for me today. And I I had this like plan to come like spiel all this out to you guys, but by the time I got here tonight, like I was already feeling fucking better. Yeah, dude, you know? that happens to me. Like when I come here or meetings, mm -hmm. like I'm just like. Ugh. And as soon as I step into the fellowship, I'm just like, it's like it feels like a safe place for sure. Mm -hmm. One thing, you, oh, go for it. I just wanted to say, you came in for what it's worth. You came in looking lighter today. Yeah, like yeah. I'm just saying, like you did. You look like a man who like <laughs> got something off his chest or shoulders or something, bro. I just I noticed it visibly. You got a glow. You did, yeah. You got that glowing. sober glow. That's, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Finger yeah. guns, are Finger coming, guns back. coming back. <laughs> Dude, one thing that that you said before we started recording, it's like now you're like you're working your steps, 
And like one thing, like I remember, like going through like the steps, like early on, and like having that experience, like like those God shots or like the podcast, the meeting, the conversation with your parents, like constant like that. Like I always like refer to that as like you're living the steps. And you mentioned that before we started recording. Like now you said like I'm I'm working them. I'm I'm living the steps. Like using the steps in life. And I think that's I think that's important. And it's it's there's a lot there mm. for you to like to work the steps or live them. You know, and the whole powerlessness and stuff like that. How you said how you had a three hour conversation or something like that about powerlessness. Like that had to feel fucking good. It did. Yeah. It's important, man. Like I've learned. Like I was working the steps and we had a conversation like now that I'm I've been sober for a while, it's like I wanna rework the steps and pull another layer out and find out some more shit about me. But and it was cool, like learning how to when my disease is activated in sobriety, mm-hmm. like watching out for that like was huge. I was like, Holy shit, dude, it's like when am I impulsive, compulsive, or or obsessive about something? And that's like a tell sign of a, like when my disease is activated, even without like a substance in my body and I just been really working out with, like working with that lately like and working with denial like self-denial self-thought denials and like i don't know man i'm just i want to dig i want to dig deep again man mm-hmm. again oh sorry go ahead Jordan. uh and i and i think that that's so important because like what i've said before on this podcast and what i really firmly believe is i feel more susceptible like again, not to scare anybody, but I feel more susceptible to a relapse at a year than I did at a month, mm-hmm. right? Because that's so fresh. You don't like, you're like, I'm never doing that again. But at a year, you know, I, in eighteen months and all that stuff, I feel like it's it's healthy to go through and go, okay, let's let's rework this now that I have like this new frame of mind and kind of go through and 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 keep it fresh because it's easy to kind of forget and it feels a little bit more i'm more vulnerable now than i was then if that makes sense yeah no that's a good point that you said dude like when you said romancing the drink Mm -hmm. like i've done that and i still do that sometimes and it's crazy because like when they when i was working on romancing the drink they were telling me like well we were relating it to all these good thoughts and good feelings and party moments like i've had a lot i had a lot of fucking good times in my addiction yeah i had partied a shitload like it was all a big ass party until it wasn't a party. But, right. but like you said, romancing that thing, dude. Like I, I do, and like I, I'll play the tape through, and like I'll visualize where it takes me, and it still fucking sounds like a good idea, dude. Like I relate to that shit so much. Like, like it's it's amazing how the fucking thoughts that I do or where it took me, and still so like, yeah, hmm, might be good this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, man, I think I think it's so important, like, just for when I'm standing firm, be careful that I don't fall. It yeah. really comes down to that for me, man. It really fucking does to take that self inventory to wonder what am I doing? What's my part? You know, am I being an asshole all over again? Like I said, something sarcastic to Brie earlier today. And she goes, you know, for a guy who's already labeled an asshole, that's really not a good look on you. I was like. She made me feel like oh, small, shit. dude. I was like, my bad, dude. <laughs> <laughs> For real, bro. Like, she hit me with it, like, in a good way, like, in a healthy, like, supportive way, if that makes sense. But, it does. But, like, so, but, like, for real, I have to, like, look at those different things, man. Because, again, to me, there is such a big difference between sobriety and recovery, right? I, again, I have no interest in just being sober. I don't want to be fucking, because that's boring. That's boring. The recovery shit, this shit, reaching out to people, all the stuff we get to do, man. The messages we receive, going to H and I, going to meetings, speaking, and then when some kid comes up and says, "Hey, man, that kept me clean today," it's like, "Whoa, that's a spiritual high that I've i never experienced before." And like, that's the type of stuff that I get to do when I actively work my program, when I'm willing to work my program every single day. And like you said, dude, like living the program, actually working the program, right? You mentioned that too, like living that on a daily basis. You know, one of the things that my sponsee did because he was really struggling with his will, God's will, all that type of stuff. He's like, man, I don't know how to get out of my will. I was like, dude, you want to fight your will? Like, you want to not do your will? I was like, drive the fucking speed limit. Just drive the speed limit for two straight days. Oh, and yeah. he, he calls me, dude. He's like, you know, this fucking sucks, man. Like, yeah. Everyone You're around, fired. Yeah. Everyone around me fucking flipping me off. I'm like, and I just want to tell him, like, I fucking got to. Like, this is, I'm trying to stay sober. So, like, all this shit. Uh, nice, but, like, it was, it was an example. Just like that dude, right? The outside world doesn't fight fair, Mm-mm. right? 
We uh, have to work our pro. I, okay, I have to work my program. I'll speak for myself. I have to work my fucking program when everyone else around me doesn't. Right? Like, and it, whatever they do does not. My sponsor tells me all the time, Dylan. Once you're in this program and you work your program, you no longer have the luxury to act like an asshole. Mm -hmm. So it's like I have to be conscious of my shit, my tough, part. Huh? It's tough, tough, bro. But again, humble myself before God humbles me. Uh, nice piece of humble pie. Yeah, <laughs> That's my yeah. favorite thing. It's fucking tough, man. It's tough. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, oh, gosh, I love that thing. Yeah. It's good, dude. Anything else? Uh, yeah, I, well, I was just out with so a friend of mine came through uh, Arizona and stayed with me. And, and you know, he has a friend that lives here, too. And, and you know, and they, they drink and do whatever they do, you know. And, and uh, so I went, I took him, you know, we went and met uh, his friend that lives here. You know, some, some girl lives up, you know, whatever. So we go out, you know, to or they, they're going to go out and I drive them or whatever. And and I find myself, you know, surrounded by a bunch of, you know, people, younger people just partying, you know, getting drunk. I'm in, in Scottsdale, like, and it, and session kicks in. <laughs> yeah, this fucking girl buys like a Thanks six for the invite on that. Yeah. That sounds like you're, a good time. You're working, bro, I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on that. You had, <laughs> Fuck had, this guy. You had something to do for sure. Don, anyway, remember? I'm sorry, Gilbert. We we're, we're leaving a meeting and we called Donnie. I don't know. He called us, huh? <laughs> I don't know. He was on. Yeah. He ended up on the phone though. He, I think you called me like, bro. I just had a fucking good time at fucking Scottsdale. I was like, oh, gee, thanks for the advice, Donnie. <laughs> what and is it? Like he made all kinds of excuses. I was like, nope. No. <laughs> like, uh, like you, you had a meeting, or you no, with no. your girlfriend, or you, was, uh, bro? You had family shit to do. Me and Goomer were at a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, that's not it. Donnie. Nope, keep going. <laughs> It's all right. You're hanging out with your friend. It's all it's good. Cool. He's like, it's well, 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 it's all good. I didn't want to put you around drinks and stuff. Like that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Gone to bars when I was two months sober, Donnie. Oh, we yeah. pay pool at bars, Donnie. Uh, I took you to the strip club. He took you to the strip club. Three months sober, three months dude. Sober. Like, I know. What you, I, that was so fucking wrong of me to dude, do that. You, well, <laughs> I was in California when you caught your. Hey, Dylan, what's the name of that strip club you were telling me about? <laughs> I was like. Dude, who are you with? You're like, ah, don't worry about it. <laughs> and then you, as soon as you tell me that too, you rule out five names. And you're like, we're going to Titty Bar. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, bro. Uh, that so, was uh, fucked up. Excuses, excuse. I thought, I'm sorry, Guru. I thought sobriety <laughs> was going to be full of all that stuff. Oh, yeah, when, I, yeah. when I heard that story, I was like, hell yeah. It's about, it's about to pick up, man. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Comes in waves. <laughs> Comes in waves. <laughs> Just bro. be prepared. Right? <laughs> man, selfish, man. Oh, dude. Selfish. I'm not selfish, man. Anyway. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, yeah you were right. you were we telling the story. story. I don't Back appreciate it. You're surrounded by young people. I don't appreciate you calling me selfish. <laughs> I'm Hell, sorry. I'm sorry, Jordan. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jordan. Hell, I'm sorry, Jordan. Every time Donnie <laughs> insults Anybody Jordan, <laughs> mostly, <laughs> he apologizes to me for some reason. It's true. Because I'm calling him out on it. Because Jordan gets a look on him like, this motherfucker. And then Donnie and I, and I call Donnie out his right. bullshit. I'm sorry. Go I'm sorry, Goober. Sorry, I'm used to it. Now. It happened one fucking <laughs> time, dude. It happened we, one time. All the time. Can we tell that story? No, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we we never released that episode. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. The Oscar I don't even one? No. No. Oh, <laughs> the one. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. Oh, so so <laughs> we're, after we record my one year episode, 365. After 365, we're sitting there. We all go outside for the cigarette break. And Donnie comes outside and goes, oh, what the fuck did we even talk about in that episode? <laughs> he, go, he goes, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, what the fuck did, Dude, we, what even did we even talk, talk about? about? And I was like, oh, well, it was <laughs> like one year. Jordan is sitting there rubbing, rubbing my gun in his one year chip. <laughs> <laughs> that we gave him on the episode. <laughs> Donnie's the last one to walk out to the bed. Like, the fuck we talk? Can we even use any of that? Can we use any of that? And then Enjoy everyone just goes, what the fuck, dude? He starts laughing. He goes, I'm sorry, Goomer. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh. sitting there with my one year coin and a tear in my eye. Right. And I was like, damn. What the <laughs> fuck just happened? <laughs> He's the one that bought it for you. And everything. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> George is over there looking like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, I'm man. sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. sitting there looking at like, Donnie, why are you I, know, I was like, why the fuck you just apologize to Goober? Not my one years. Like, in Jordan's, dude. Uh, they're all exaggerated. <laughs> no, no, we're not. That's exactly, That's exactly how it went happened, down. Dude. All of us remember uh, it that way. Oh, I told you. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> Connie cannot record late as fuck. Uh, I'm up no. early and you can't be recording after yeah. 11, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Goob. Uh, well, if everybody you, wondered well, why I apologize, Jordan. That. You never did. I just did. I said I apologize. I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Promptly <laughs> admitted it. Promptly. You need to reward your fucking yeah, steps. Tell me what I need to do. I'll tell you I Don't need to take my off. inventory, boy. <laughs> Someone's yeah, got to uh, fucking take me. Oh, man. Anyway, so you're out in Scottsdale. You know what? Shake. It doesn't <laughs> fucking matter. It doesn't even matter. It is anymore. what it is. <laughs> None of it matters. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing matters, bro. He's out. Because, He's like, uh, I can see it in his uh, eyes. He just died. <laughs> he just died. I can see it in his eyes. He just oh, lost man. any momentum. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, Donnie. <laughs> I'm done, dude. I'm out. Does that mean it's daily Donnie time? No, dude. <laughs> you don't even get that anymore. All right, bro. we got to adjust for Jordan then. We got to adjust uh, for Jordan. Yeah. Jordan. Yeah. I like that shirt, by the way, Donnie. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah, man. Was, yeah. From that Instagram Live, dude. Shout out to the Sober's new, the new cool, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. It's cool. Nice. Yeah. To send shirts and stuff. Yeah, we all got one. We'll yeah. snap a photo tomorrow. Yeah, for real, man. It's awesome. Nice. So, listen, bro. You either got to tell that story or you got to <laughs> drop a Daily Donnie on us. Uh, well, dude, it was just like the <laughs> you guys were talking about romancing the drink, right? Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, in my mind, dude, this girl fucking spent six hundred dollars on a bottle. They're like, they keep offering it to me over and over. I'm like, no, I don't drink, you know. Like that's my automatic response, and uh, you know, and it, but in my mind, like I had the thought, like, oh, you know, they're all fucking doing it, you know. But then I, I, I use my vivid imagination, right, like to think of the good times. Like I had some fucking good ass times when I partied, right? Like we all, I think we all did. We yeah, could, you know. We'd be lying if we say we didn't. And I didn't get fucked up for 10 plus years because right. I wasn't having fun. I didn't get addicted because I hated yeah, it. Yeah, right? it was just when I crossed that line, that imaginary line that we don't know when and where. And, you know, I know how, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when and where. I don't right? got the more W's, but I got the H. Think, uh, the more I think about that, the more I can pinpoint that line, actually. Yeah, yeah me too. With, with every with With every, with every with substance. Yeah. There's like three pivotal moments. Yeah, that's right. Fucking me up. <laughs> totally. <laughs> this is like, that's that fucking line. Yeah. <laughs> there was a big line in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> and I crossed it. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. With but, everything. Yeah, dude. No, but I uh I caught myself, you know, thinking about it. I was like, well, fuck, they're all drinking, you know, like you know, it, it just crossed my mind that I that I'm able to fucking have a drink. And then I automatically use my vivid imagination to take me literally through the path that I've done twice now, like from that first drink and into overdose, hospital, fucking almost dead like in rehab again like that's what i i just play the whole tape out, I man. that's like one of my biggest tools that i that i use now it's like i play that fucking tape out vividly in my mind oh dude and i, I start i and i prayed dude. like literally while i'm sitting there in my head i'm praying to like you know just guide me and and not yeah. you know take guide my thoughts you know and and relieve that obsession or that relieve that thought from my mind but then and then it was just it was fucking so clear like in a parent as i sit there and i and i watch them progress you know <laughs> dude drunk people aren't fun to be around and i'm just you like all right drunk. i'm like all right guys gotta go yep. <laughs> peace Re reaches that point where you're like and i'm done uh, yeah dude well it's... you talked about that when you went to seattle yeah. like there was that point no oh, yeah. yeah not to say like that but you know it's just yeah. and then the girl you know the, yeah. i see the girl starts fucking bawling her eyes out and just like Oh, you shit. know the stages of drunkenness, right, <laughs> and I'm yeah, just yeah. like, ah, oh, fuck, yeah, I gotta yeah. go. <laughs> That's funny, man. But yeah, yeah no, nah, it, it's you know, it's cool. Uh, you know, it was cool to see my friend though, like connect like back with him. We literally just told a story about. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. But and then he just happened to be coming through fucking Arizona, like from working, and I got to you know spend time with him sober, and it's cool, man. But yeah, it's amazing, dude. No, I'm glad you played that tape through, bro. Yeah, Very important dude. thing. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, it doesn't matter how much time, like, I feel like we just have, we're at a meeting. Like, we 
still get those fucking thoughts, bro. And that's yeah. the thing. They're just thoughts. So I don't have to act on them. Mm-hmm. Like the three things I have control over is my actions, reactions, and my attitude. And I truly believe that today. Like nice. with anything. So when you, when you romance the drink, do you ever feel like you got like a beast caged in? Fuck yeah. And like, you're just I like, do. Yeah. Like you're yeah. just like that beast of you is just like, just one fucking Wait. drop or one bump. Like, let me go. And just like, I'm like, Whoa. fucking, t- I'm gonna be like, you're like, what's the <laughs> fucking show, dude? Uh, the fucking monster. Uh, fucking the old, you know, <laughs> <laughs> What? What? <laughs> was it Monster Jam? Space that's, what, jam? that's Space Monster Jam, dude. <laughs> Space <laughs> Jam. Space Jam, bro. And they're like, oh, that was like almost a sin against bro. 90s kids right there. <laughs> I am a 90 kid. I know. That's what right, 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 I I think we're done yeah. here. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's up yeah. with that daily? <laughs> <laughs> I give up. The bro. Daily Nailed Dawn. It. Nailed it. That's all I got. No. I, uh, what we what we uh, sow today, we reap tomorrow. Hell yeah! Uh, I sent you that one. Yeah. He didn't. That's not the one I sent. The daily. <laughs> I free to drop the one I sent. I was. I excited. actually read that today in the success journal that your wife bought me. For oh my, hell yeah! For yeah. <laughs> the daily Donnie. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> uh, all right, what romancing else? the drink. Hell no! <laughs> Hell no! <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, all right, well that was fun, man. Fucking super proud, Jordan Goomer. Super proud of you guys. <laughs> Donnie, don't look at me right now. I can't. I, you what? almost said you're super proud of me, bro. <laughs> almost. 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 I'm, so. I'm very proud of you, Donnie. Uh, I'm proud of you too, Don. Thank you, Donnie. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know what else I appreciate? You, Jordan, and Goober keeping me clean today. Goober. Oh, yeah. Everyone, Goober. everyone out there, thank you so much for being a part of my recovery. Please subscribe to the <laughs> channel. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Like, share, leave a review, all that good stuff. We thank you so much for listening to another episode of Not So Bad. Peace. 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 Peace.